Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our series on software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamentals of testing. We are in chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and continuing ahead with 1.4 our test process. As a part of our previous tutorial we understood what exactly test design is all about and uh, we also understood that what exactly is the role of test cases as a part of the testing life cycle. We would like to talk about the test cases in more significant way when we come to understanding of what is requirement, what is design, etc. And I'm planning to do it a little later. Now let's continue ahead and understand a little more fundamentals about testing where the next phase will be the test implementation. As a part of this particular phase, we generally get prepared, get ready for all our executions. Moreover, what exactly the getting ready stands for? It's all to make sure that have you done what you were supposed to do before executing your test cases. Now, the very first point to understand that it is a phase where you generally start prioritizing your test process, test cases, the test procedures, etc. Now, in our previous phase, that is test design, it is always a possibility that multiple testers are writing test cases in any significant order as they understand the requirement. But post that, you take a lot of multiple factors into consideration like the complexity, you talk about the risk involved, or maybe any kind of criticality which must be dealt first or should be addressed first. We'll be talking about these terms like what is risk and how do you address risk-based testing as a part of our future tutorials. But here, the prioritization is something which we start doing and aligning our test cases to that of the priority identified. Moreover, the only reason we want to prioritize as test cases is that at least the critical items are handled well ahead of time in our life cycle. Of course, if it comes to your general life too, you try to handle the most complicated problem much earlier than the easier one because you are pretty much sure how long will you take for the easier ones but you are not sure how long the complicated will take. So given that you will have a long bandwidth, long timeline to finish the ones which are not unknown to you or kind of not aware that how much is gonna take, right? You get started with those things first when you complete that then you look forward to the simple ones and it should be easy to do. But at some point, we also understand that in case we run out of time and we are not able to execute all the test cases, we pretty much know the remaining ones are of low level or low criticality or maybe no criticality at all. So all your risk areas, all your complexities would have been already addressed by the time you reach your deadlines. And you can always excuse them or make use a different form of testing like exploratory testing which could save a lot of your time. So that's how the prioritization can help you at any point of time and we start doing that as a part of the test implementation. The next thing to talk about is creating a test suite out of the test procedures and the tests which are automated too. Now test suite is basically collection of test cases which are that the test procedures and uh, it helps us to do all the execution and helps us to prepare that what kind of test cases can be executed together and does not lead to an independent test case. So you can always put similar behaving test cases or similar kind of uh, activities together so that these test cases can be run exactly at the same time. So you can always combine tests together under a test set and decide that, okay, whenever I run, these 15 test cases should be executed together. Why would you do that? We'll slowly understand as we proceed ahead with our discussion. Talking about arranging test suites within a test execution schedule, which simply means that just the prioritization may not be enough. You may have several other dependencies like technical dependency, logical dependencies, and many other factor influencing your final order of execution. So not alone priority is one among them, there are many other factors which influences the final order of execution. We'll be talking about these terms in detail again when we come to the preparation of the test execution schedule, which tells us that how exactly these dependencies would be helpful to define the final order. Moreover, at this point, we are also assuring that the environment which we decided in the previous cycle or previous phase 
we are now making sure that we are building it up and at the same time also validating if all this has been established as per the expectation or we are pending to do something else or there's anything else which is required to be done right moreover making sure that all the components which are required to be a part of the test environment is configured up to the mark now what exactly a test environment is test environment is basically collection of your software and hardware combination which builds up an environment where your newly built application will be installed and tested right or generally you call it as deployed and tested now you pretty much understand that a newly built application will have certain specification on even on the environment and when it comes to testing we do not excuse that for example if i'm building up a web application talking about the browser the version of the browser selected add-ons or any sort of extensions which are required to work on this application is called as a test environment if i'm talking about a desktop application the operating system, the hardware resources, or any kind of add-ons which are required to be installed or plugin required to be installed is called as a test environment. Similarly, the environment can be different for different types of application or different domain specific. Not all the products use the similar type of combination. They make, it, make use of different configurations, different expectations for their test environment when it comes to different application altogether. Talking about preparing the test data and ensuring that it is properly loaded in the test environment simply means that in order to write test cases and execute them, there is a supporting set of data which is required. What is test data? We discussed in our previous tutorial that test data is all that called as a user input. Now, whenever we interact with the system, if we interact with an application, if a user has to provide a value, is what you call it as test data. And test data are really crucial to be identified before execution because not everything is what you just think. For example, if you are building up an application for a company which is based out of another country than yours, or maybe on the western side or the eastern side of the world, then they have a different pin code, they have different phone numbers, they have different addresses, which are not exactly as per the country or city you live in, right? And you need to make sure that we're just not using random set of phone numbers or just calculating that a phone number has to be 10 digits. We always try that. No, we do not come up with the test data on our mindset. We rather collect this information from the business or prepare the data according to the requirement. Moreover, if you talk about phone numbers, the zip codes, there are a specific set of data which we need to make use of. So talking about test data alone is a critical part of the testing process. We just can't test it with what comes to our mind. So make sure that you discuss this with your business, discuss with your business analyst and understand what are the expectations and valid set of data to be used for testing this application. Moreover, at this point, we'll also be trying to test our review or evaluate that if all the requirements have been converted into the test cases. Also looking forward to do the bi-directional traceability because it's really important to understand how exactly you derive these test cases. Or even if you have derived these test cases, you need to know from which parent document did you derive this. In turn, it has great benefits of having bi-directional traceability, which means that it is associated to the parent for at any point of time to tell you the requirement coverage. Now, for an example, if a requirement ID 1.1 has 15 test cases written for it and it has covered all the major functionalities and minor functionalities of that requirement, it can tell you that these 15 test cases are enough to achieve 100% requirement coverage. Moreover, at some point of time, if your requirement gets modified, or there is a change involved due to this traceability you will able you will be able to detect what are those 15 test cases and based on that you can judge if you need more test cases to be written to cover the change or these written test cases will be enough to continue testing right so the traceability will identify that what are those 15 test cases which are written for the sync requirement 
And moreover, there are many other benefits of having traceability which you will slowly understand and step into the more details to understand the same. So putting it all together, we are talking about the test implementation and which is more about setting up the environment, getting ready, there are cross checks which are happening and you know just making sure that all that what you need before you kick off with the starting of the execution, you have it already. Because during the execution, if you have to pause and you have to kind of continue doing what you should have done before, we consider it a waste of time and blocker for testing, right? So making sure that you are all set up and ready for kicking off with the execution phase is what we do in the test implementation. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.